So last week we did a lesson on the world's easiest fruit tree to grow featuring the fig hunter. And today we're going to be discussing the world's easiest fruit to be growing with nature with Alec YouTube channel. And we're going to be discussing what that is. So stay tuned. Hi, my name is Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivory Organics, where we grow coal plants and author of Saving the World with the Home Garden. And today we're here with nature with Alec youtube and we're here at his property in thousand oaks and thank you so very much for having us here today thank you thank you so much also it's an honor to have you on our property and get introduction this beautiful dragon fruit and getting some lessons as well i'm looking forward so um the world's easiest fruit what is it you kind of yes. just said it and it's also right here yes dead center between us what is it it is a dragon fruit a it dragon, dragon fruit. fruit yes and it's such a such an amazing fruit that gives you you know from three to five seasons a year and you can grow up to like probably three pound fruit on your beautiful garden at home and this is just an example when uh, beginning of february and this is a beautiful american beauty dragon fruit that were donated to us uh, from uh Yale from dragon fruit farm moore park and we will be happy to share with you the beauty of this fruit at the end of the video Let's do that. And so what variety of dragon fruit is this one? This is American Beauty. It can grow up to probably a pound and a half and it's round shape, very sweet and has beautiful magenta color. So Alec, if you can share with us, why are dragon fruit the easiest fruit to grow? So basically, you know, I got this plant like 12 years ago and it's just a small stick in the, in the container and it's growing, it requires minimum water. It doesn't bother about the sun. It could handle, you know, 10 to 12 hours of sun today but what's what's miracle with you know from one flower you can get up to three pound fruit and that's the beauty of it amazing taste beautiful um organic home fruit so and they even it's cactus and it's climbing cactus you know it's using tropical to climb in the trees dragon fruit actually i look at my garden growing quarter each day it's constantly moving forward and branches expanding and it gets additional branches and that's the beauty of it it growing fast and producing much better fruit within like probably since june all the way until february that's great so dragon fruit being succulents which of all plants are one of the easiest to grow and more specifically being cactus how do you propagate them so basically when we share the the cuttings of the fruit you should leave it for a couple days you know to heal the wound and everything and you can leave this actually close to the soil close to the moisture and overnight um, moisture will actually start helping to grow the the uh, roots and it could survive weeks without the water and uh, planting in the soil so you're saying i can take a cutting off the dragon fruit and just put it on aside for several weeks without it being in the dirt or planted and it'll still continue to survive yes it will start to grow the roots and find the moisture and it's going to guide through that's amazing yes so another question I have on dragon fruit is how often do dragon fruit fruit? Okay, so basically uh, it, it's producing the flowers. I would say in California here, we have flowers from May all the way till probably late winter time. And it takes about uh, 35 days from the bud of the flower to flower to open. You have only one night in order to pollinate, cross pollinate, or if it's self pollinating flower uh, uh, plant. So, and from that point, after pollination, within two to three days, you already know if it's done and then you're gonna have a fruit within 35 to 40 days. That's fantastic. So again, in regards to yields, it has a minimum of three yields every single year? Even more, even up to five. Up to five seasons, you can collect the fruit. So it'll bloom and then just fruit. It'll bloom and continuously. You've got the same time, like last year, we had lots of fruits and still buds of flowers coming out and you continually harvest the fruit. So from the time the flower opens till the time you harvest the fruit, the average is how many days again? It's about 35 days. So one of the fastest ripening tomatoes is the early girl, and that takes 55 days. And they call it early girl because that's an early harvesting tomato. Right. Yeah. 55 days, You're, the dragon fruit ripens and can also get two to three times bigger. Because I've seen even on your property harvesting like two to three pound Right, dragon fruit. Yeah, 
This is Mark. Yeah, we collected last last summer. We collected uh, two pounds, fourteen and a half ounces. Two pounds, fourteen ounces yeah. were harvested on the Nature with Alec YouTube channel, where you can see that he's holding a uh, dragon fruit, almost yeah. three pounds in weight. Here we go. Whoa, beautiful, pretty laverne red fruit. And again, it ripens again from the time the blossom blooms to harvest is about 30 to 35 days. Correct. That's phenomenal. And then it continuously, continuously pushes out yields of dragon fruit. Yes, that's yes. such a joy. Such a joy to see the flowers, pollinate the flowers, and same time harvest the fruit. What a highly productive plant to integrate to the home orchard. And I personally just started integrating dragon fruit onto my property about six months ago yep. with the meeting that we had with Richard Lee of Grafting Dragon Fruit. Um, if you can add one more thing is, and I'm hoping as people get inspired across the country are, what is the grow zone for growing dragon fruit? It probably is on uh, from nine to 10, it's, it's good. So it should not be freezing for a long period of time. We do have a couple nights uh, that goes uh, to uh, zero Celsius, a freezing point, but during this daytime, it should be at least six hours of sun. So the goal is it shouldn't be in a grow zone that has night times that freeze or grow Correct. zones with you know, yeah. like freezing temperatures. It no go below the freezing temperature, definitely. And, and it has to be a sunny day after this so the recovery of the plant will take much faster. Makes sense. And um, how about for people living in, let's say those freezing zones across the country, can they still grow dragon fruit? Correct, yeah, there is a lot of opportunities for growers, you know, in container, they can have this in um, summertime, do they have it outside, and definitely during the winter time, cold season, they can put it inside the house, and I've seen a lot of my customers reply to me that they do grow inside the house, and you just leave it to the sunny side of your uh, window, and this will be happy as well. That's great. So I'm glad you mentioned growing dragon fruit in containers. And I know before we conclude, you're gonna give us a tour of the three different ways you're growing dragon fruit on your property. But can you share with us the different varieties? I know most of us are familiar with like that red dragon fruit. And when you cut into it, it has the white interior with the black seeds. Um, and I believe it's called- what Vietnam was? white. So the, the, the Vietnam white is the number one most popular dragon fruit. But it's not the only variety of dragon fruit, oh, there right? Is, there, is a, there is hundreds of varieties of uh, dragon fruit, of course. And it's uh, become more popular these days to have a, a red variety or the pink variety of the dragon fruit. And uh, majority of the, uh, based on my selection, based on uh, productivity of the fruit, so, so American Beauty, Physical Graffiti, Hellis Comet, you know, uh, and a uh, few more that really could make you up to three pound fruit. So dragon fruit can be, I'm just looking at, let's say the inside of the dragon fruit could be white on the inside or the, also the exterior can be red. I mean, what are the combinations of, of dragon fruit when it comes to color? It could be green outside and red inside uh, with some varieties. It could be red outside and magenta color inside. That's more attractive color that people really, you know, enjoying to eat and enjoy to, to, to watch how it's growing. And as well as the the white variety inside and the yellow, yellow Paloro has this as well, you know, a nice and beautiful, uh, sweet taste. So that's basically, you know, multiple. There is a red, dark red variety. So it depends on the people's choices. So the yellow one again, it's called the Ecuador Palora, and um, I like describing it. And I know most people consider um, the ones that have tried that red exterior white interior called the vietnam white um which is the most popular you know found in grocery stores across the country um would say that it's kind of bland tasting and, and just lacking in flavor and sweetness but the yellow one that i tried uh, most recently i would say has a flavor that's very similar to sugar cane like it's got that much sweetness in it but something i've learned from you is that apparently the ecuador polaris which are the yellow varieties that you're starting to find more and more in grocery stores across the country apparently have seeds that are larger, more large on average than other varieties of dragon fruit and that there's a way to find some dragon fruit that are actually still delivers the sweetness, yes, but without the large seeds. And what are those are, which of yes. those That's are your favorites? American Beauty, Physical Graffiti, Delight, Hellis Comet, and as well as the Laverne Red Dragon Fruit, which we have in our uh, property. 
and that is amazing it's, it's mostly selected based on productivity of the fruit you know the seasons it gives you three to five seasons a year and you can have up to three pounds of fruit and the color and the flavor is really amazing that's fantastic thanks for sharing all of that information with us alec so before we conclude can you share with us the three different ways You've been growing dragon fruit here on your property. Yes, I'll be happy to show the way we grow. So we have one option is in containers. So we use half barrels with the trellis. The second variety we're going to show you is how to build a, a dragon fruit using tomato cages. And the third is more commercial way using the metal sticks or wood sticks and run the line uh, along the property as well. Well, let's do it. Let's, let's start over here with the Laverne Red Dragon Fruit that you've got using tomato cages and planted in ground here on your property. Correct, Charles. Uh, this is the uh, dragon fruit that I bought uh, 12 years ago. And uh, this is Laverne Red Dragon Fruit. And I start using the tomato cages that uh, helps the branches to go higher and higher. And I can maintain this um, up to 10, 12 feet high with my limited space of the property and gives me much higher ability and those branches are actually expanding a lot. So that's a great opportunity to use the tomato cages when you have limited space in your property. Here we go, I'd like to introduce you to the one of the ways that I'm using at my property. As you can see, I have a limited space of the soil and I decide to go higher with my uh, uh, trellis using tomato cages. And as you can see, the Laverne Dragon Fruit grows up to uh, probably 12 feet high. And I'm using the tomato cages that you can see in one of my videos, which uh, planted this dragon fruit in tomato cages, connected with another case, and it's attached to the bar on the top. And from that point, every branch that will go higher and higher, I can be able to manage to attach to those uh, coils of the, bra of the tomato cage. And this way you can go much higher and produce more fruit. And as you can see over here, we continue with more and more uh, varieties to plant. And very soon I'm gonna introduce you to two more ways of growing dragon fruit. So what I wanna share with you is that the tomato cages have not harmed, as I would imagine, I'm sure some of you are watching and thinking, you know, tomato cages have got really small metal that if it bends over, it's probably gonna break the vine of the dragon fruit. But if you take a look, you know, starting up here where my hand is, you can see the tomato cages and this dragon fruit has been here on the property close to 12 years and you can see that the dragon fruit are growing beautifully through it whatever is resting on these tomato cages you'll see are not breaking at all so i've noticed that some of your dragon fruit is kind of starving i see that a lot of the branches that are coming off of it are turning yellow there's other parts that are green, but even the parts that are green could be more green. And out of yes. curiosity, what have you done last year in regards to feeding and fertilizing this particular dragon fruit? So last year, I just uh, give uh, multivitamins to this plant. And as well, recently from the last rain, I, I gave uh, Epsom salt. Uh, hopefully, you know, to boost a little bit more green color, but apparently the, the plant is still not getting enough uh, nutrients as well. So if you've just given the plants Epsom salt, Epsom salt are only high in two of the macronutrients of the six macronutrients that plants need. Epsom salt has sulfur and it also has magnesium and that's it. So you're giving your plants two macronutrients and um, I noticed you also mentioned um, with other parts of your property they also occasionally use manure and manure would have a very high nitrogen content so that's now a third macronutrient but also comes with high salt which can also um, stress out the plant if you use too much of it so when it comes to plant care most fertilizers when you go shopping for a fertilizer will have three three of the macronutrients which include nitrogen for nice green plants phosphorus because we want to make sure we have a lot of delicious and nutritious fruit and then potassium for disease resistance and root development three macronutrients what ivory organics has done is it's come up with a product called all-purpose organic fertilizer which gives your plants all of the six macronutrients and the original name of the product was also called six macros but as it's continued to go through going through its certifications across the country um, it has evolved with this new product label which when you take a look at both the front and the back and the ingredients it'll explain that it has not just the NPK nitrogen phosphorus potassium elements but also includes the magnesium that you get with your Epsom salt 
The sulfur you also get with the Epsom salt, but it's also lacking in another the six macronutrient is calcium, which builds all the cell walls in your plants. So six, hence the name, six macros for the six macronutrients. And so today, before we leave, we're gonna fertilize this plant to make sure it's got everything it needs. Something you could have done during the winter, and here we are now, the first week of February, and for us in our grow zone 10, yes. our last chance to frost was the last week of January. So here we are early February, we can now begin to fertilize our plants slowly as the light hours are increasing, the plants are waking up from dormancy. I notice a lot of your trees are beginning to bloom yes. and um, pushing out new growth. And so this is an excellent time to start with whatever the fertilizer label says in regards to dose, is do about 50% that amount and really peak as you get closer to summer in regards to putting the fertilizer recommended amount as that's when the peak light hours are happening, the plant metabolism is peaking and fruiting and flowering and, and that would be the time to actually apply the most amount of fertilizer. So begin feeding your plants peaking in summer and then gradually um, scale back in the fall. But something that would have kept this dragon fruit extra green now mm -hmm in January and February is if you did a foliar feed, which you could have also done with this product at a rate of one tablespoon per gallon of water. And you could have actually did a foliar feed. It would have absorbed all the nutrients it needs so it wouldn't look like it's starving for nutrition. I got you, thank you so much, yeah. And uh, let's get the chance to feed this plant and uh, we'll get the results very soon. Let's do it. So the other thing I wanna highlight with you is that the 2021 Ivy Organic All-Purpose Blend Super Plus Blend now includes azomite, which is the volcanic crushed rock, which delivers a lot of the micronutrients to the plants as well for optimal plant metabolism. And all we're gonna do here right now is just take, and even though you've got mulch all around the plant, and a lot of people remove the mulch, fertilize, and then return the mulch, but the fine granular powder, once you water, will go straight to the soil level, and you don't have to even disturb the mulch. And what we're gonna do here is to simply take the granular ivy organic and i'm just putting one tablespoon on one side and now i'm just going to take another tablespoon and apply that to the other that's great yeah once you water it within a few days the nutrients are going to begin to enter the plant and you're going to start seeing the benefits over the next week or two here i'd like to introduce the second way of growing dragon fruit at this uh, uh section as you can see we use the uh, half barrels and we use the uh, redwood to build the trellis and uh, the frame of the trellis will have the branches to go above the the frame and then leaning down as you can see over here and this is the great way for dragon fruit to hang and a great way for dragon fruit to protect their branches as well inside the bull wrap is used for air roots to hold and collect the moisture during the night. And this is the great introduction of uh, four different varieties of dragon fruit that as you can see growing and uh, Charles actually standing by uh, physical graffiti and Haley's Comet dragon fruit. And it's so nice and pretty and I added little lights so at nighttime it's really amazing to see the beauty of the green color and I can't wait to see the flowers and fruit on this section as well. So this is the one of the homegrown options that owners would easy to have on their patio and their yards and uh, you can see in my video channel exactly how we did it in one weekend with the soil with planting and with all set up okay and I'd like to introduce the third way that we use in our uh, home garden so this is like more commercial way that I've seen people growing, especially when I visited the uh, uh, dragon fruit farm Moorpark with the Yal. I purchased those uh, metal sticks. At this point, I use eight footer metal sticks because I have more space to go higher. And I use my recycled uh, uh, material, the cable that uh, left over from the cable company. They're very strong, they run, and they last gonna harm the the branches of the dragon fruit and as you can see you know um, I have space probably you know try to get four feet at least for each plant and uh, what I use I use as well the the chicken manure I can wrap the roots below the the plant so it prevent from gophers um, uh, to damage the roots 
okay and this is the great opportunity if you have uh, limited space as well less amount spending this uh, stick would probably cost you you know from eight to ten dollar and the wire you can get uh, from material used material you can buy the the wire as well and you train the dragon fruit to stretch higher and stretch sideways so this way you can collect more fruit and uh, give more space and the sun's uh, uh, as well as sun uh, ability to get vitamins to the dragon fruit and here we go Charles so this is the third way and we are gonna be introducing with more more options and giving more fruits and vegetables to our friends and family I love it thanks for sharing and I just want to emphasize and I know you already said it is that you've got these wires set at maybe two to two and a half feet off the ground about four feet off the ground and then six feet off the ground and then using basically like an espalier method yes. of growing your plants horizontally so you're gonna be able to harvest dragon fruit down here and in the middle and this will be the highest level you're gonna be harvesting your dragon fruit from correct yeah and this is like a one more lane you can see I use the six footer on this level and it's gonna be a future little bit less so that's uh, give me ability to harvest from this level as well and uh, from the lower level fruit. So I have every line that the, the, what I have here in my garden so I can use the option from the top or from the bottom collect the fruit. I love it, I love it, that's great. It Thanks gives for enough sharing. space and it gives enough sun. As you can see, that's a great ability to harvest the fruit from either way. Thanks for sharing. Yep, good luck. Okay, and now we'd like to celebrate our beautiful event with the opening of uh, beautiful dragon fruit uh, which was donated by uh, Eyal from Dragon Fruit Farm Moor Park and this is the American Beauty Physical Graffiti and Voodoo Child so let's see the beauty of this fruit just gonna get to center Ooh, wow that's so beautiful. look at this beautiful magenta color of uh, American Beauty this is the physical graffiti as you can see middle of February this is more like nice and beautiful uh, pink color white and pink color and this is the voodoo child whoa look at this okay and Charles fantastic cheers let's, cheers <laughs> yes let's here let's, you go let's yeah. get our fruit okay. This is awesome. Cheers. Okay, cheers. <laughs> We're not gonna jump in the pool after this. <laughs> I might push you. Mmm. It's good. It's absolutely delicious. Okay. Let's get another spoon. So we don't double dip. Okay. And I wanna try the you're gonna try the uh, American Beauty. Okay, and compare the, the two. Yes, and physical graffiti. That is so good. Mmm. This is so juicy. This is physical graffiti. Juicy, but uh, the American Beauty has a good flavor. Yeah, I would pick this this one. See, you pick this one. This is more if you really dehydrate it. This is a good one. Look at this. It starts juicy going down. I mean, we're probably going to do the bricks test as well. So American Beauty this was this one. Uh, yes, American Beauty is around. Physical graffiti is a little bit longer. Longer. Longer, it has a pinkish color. Magenta color is this one, American Beauty. And let's try the Voodoo Child. So here we are now the um, first week of February. Yes. Do the flavors change over the course of the year depending on the amount it of sunlight and, and temperature yes. and yes. all of and that? Yes, and temperature as well. Okay. Usually during summertime, this is more mild a little bit, much, much smaller fruit. You're right. Yeah. Uh, you know, it depends. If, you, if you're trying to get the just amount of varieties and everything, of course, you're looking of uh, size of the fruit, flavor of the fruit, the beauty. So you have to make your own decision. Depends on the space. As you understand, each dragon fruit needs at least, you know, four to six feet radius area in order to grow and get enough sun and produce much better. That's awesome. Thank you so very much for you're sharing. You're welcome. Truly... Appreciate it. Oh, elbows. <laughs> Here we go. Thank you so much, guys. Okay. Thank you so much for having me. For a ton of more educational lessons with Nature with Alec, be sure to follow his link. And I'm putting that in the below video description as well as in the comments for your convenience. Click it and then don't forget to subscribe and hit that push bell notification to stay connected to all of his educational lessons from his backyard orchard as soon as they become made available. As always, give us that thumbs up. It makes a big difference. 
share it with your gardening friends and family, and always keep growing with Ivory Organics and wishing you all happy gardening.